she asked a question that I thought was a good question and something that we don't talk about a lot, which is the on the clinical trial side, you know, clinical trials usually have a an expectation of patient's presence, right? And um, most trials, especially the earlier phase ones, are fairly intensive at the beginning, and then they get less intensive as they go on. Now, you know, most patients don't necessarily stay on for a whole long time, or at least traditionally, that has been the situation. So for the first month, you know, the patient may need to go every week. They may need to stick around the center, you know, within within driving distance of the center, just to make sure if they have a side effect that's unexpected, that they can get back into the center. You know, after the first month, and generally a month equals a cycle, sometimes it's three weeks, five weeks, but but in, in general, after you know you get through a month or so, uh, you know the second month will be slightly less intensive. You know, it might be every other week. By the third month and beyond, it's usually less, right? So it might be once a month. Um, at some point, you know, depending upon if the medicine's oral or not, you know, you might be just picking up the medicine, but you may have a check in every few months. So it does really kind of ramp down. Uh, I don't know if that will help. Uh, you know, some patients, you know, decide that they want to be part of the study uh, compared with traveling. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we see a, a big difference between the sort of the standard chemotherapy, which is what uh, this patient would be offered if they didn't do a, a clinical trial, um, and 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 then the clinical trial medicines. You know, mainly longevity and stability of of cancer for a long period of time, a, a months or years. That's what we're aiming for. Um, we know with chemotherapy, it's very limited. Chemotherapy may allow more travel, but chemotherapy also has a lot more side effects, especially after you get past the standard of care and they start adding one after another after another. And so I don't know that really travel is, you know, wonderful during those times either. Uh, and of the two, I'd rather have the one that gives me the longevity and the stability and maybe be tied down at least at first to a trial center than to be on something that makes me not feel well, I'm able to travel, but really is only going to last for a few months and then there's really nothing else left. So, you know, those are that's sort of the unfortunate choice in front of a lot of patients, but I just thought it's useful to to go through that a little bit. Uh, any any questions? And then we can dive into this particular patient situation, but any questions in general about that? You know, as a phase two or a phase three, as you know, as as we know more and more about the medicine and the expectations that more and more people are taking it, they try to adapt it more towards the lifestyle of you know regular patients or regular people. Uh, you know, monthly infusions or even every six or eight weeks, some of the medicines like pembrolizumab is going in that direction. So they really do try to get it to a point where people can you know, have it and yet live their lives sort of to the fullest. Um, that being said, it's not a perfect world. So we have to kind of back into it. 